Hey, what's up cats and kittens and shout out to all my Cerebralites. It is me, the Cerebral Diva, and I'm back with another episode of Reality, and that's T-E-A because I give it to you scalding hot. So grab your cups, grab your saucers, gather around, and let's all partake in this libation of reality. But before you go another further, do yourself a favor, and while you're at it, please do me a solid, take a second, hit that subscribe button, and once you've done that, Take another second to hit that tiny little bell so you can turn on your notifications, and that way you'll be kept in the loop. All right, so let's talk about Season 6, Episode 5 of Black Ink Crew. Um, this episode was entitled Help Me Howard, and the reason this episode was entitled Help Me Howard is because Donna Lombardi, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with Donna, but Donna definitely is in dire need of an intervention of some sort, because this girl is... I don't know, she's she's lost. So anyhow, the reason this episode was entitled Help Me Howard is because Donna, who is on a hit television show, who is a prominent tattoo artist, who I'm sure if she has management is more than likely getting paid for club appearances, um, appearing in magazines. So at this point, one would think that Donna was making money hand over fist. But based on this episode, you realize that Donna is just as broke as the rest of us. You know, the struggle is real in the world of Donna Lombardi. So Donna is profiled in this show called Help Me Howard. Now, if you are from New York, you're probably familiar with the show. But for those of us who are outside of New York, this was my first uh, foray into the world or realm of Help Me Howard. So Howard is basically sort of this consumer reporter who does these sort of ambush segments where he goes and sort of fights for the for the plight of the underdog. And in this case, the underdog would be Donna's roommate. Now, Donna's roommate is alleging that Donna has been delinquent on her rent to the tune of approximately $2,500, and she's fed up, she's had enough of it. Not only is she delinquent on her rent, but she's sort of having sex indiscriminately throughout the, the apartment, not really showing this woman any respect. Now, this woman is a 52-year-old woman with grandchildren, and so you can imagine how the two lifestyles will conflict. So, because she wasn't getting money from um, Donna for, to pay her rent, she'd reached out to VH1 and the, the producers of Black Ink Crew or, or Caesar from Black Ink Crew, and she'd really got no sort of um, support from anyone, and so she thought that reaching out to Howard was her, her last resort, and that's what she did. So Donna apparently broke a window, climbed through the window, uh, doors were kicked in, you know, holes were punched in walls. The place looked really dilapidated, if you ask me, which is probably even more puzzling to me like how are you on a hit television show how are you in magazines how are you making club appearances and you don't have the money even in new york city and i realize new york is one of the most expensive housing markets in the country but if you see this apartment you know that donna couldn't have been paying more than maybe eleven hundred dollars at most to rent a room and that's me being very generous in my assessment of what she could potentially be paying i would guesstimate that she was probably paying maybe seven or eight hundred dollars on the high end to be a roommate in this particular home so donna's not paying her rent and then that leads me to think you know sometimes we watch these people on tv shows and we can be so envious of the the platform that they're given Donna is proof positive that it's not what you have, but it's what you do with what you have. Because for me personally, there was there would be no possible way that I would be on a television show, um, have access to all of the things that Donna potentially has access to, the people that she has access to, and be behind on my rent. It just wouldn't happen, not in my world. So I don't understand it, and I can understand why this woman was upset. Like, how can you not come up with... Like, even if, first of all, $2,500... That's a cumulative total of what Donna was behind on. $2,500 is probably the average rent for one month in New York. So I don't know how you get behind on rent that has to accumulate to a total of $2,500 in New York. Anyhow, I digress. So she and she, Donna's profiled on this Help Me Howard segment. Because of the, the contention between she and her roommate, she decides to move out. And then we see her show up on the front stoops of her boyfriend's apartment now this was another thing that sort of left me scratching my head i'm thinking to myself okay she just got put out she didn't have money to pay her rent where is the money going you know maybe on wigs donna wears a lot of colorful wigs that's the only place i could see that she's spending money maybe on wigs um so 
she shows up at her boyfriend's house and she has like two pieces of luggage, a shoulder bag and a piece of rolling luggage. And maybe just for television appearances, they sort of just wanted to create that scene. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that she had more luggage than that. But worst case scenario, if that's all she has, like, I would at least feel a little bit better in knowing that she's been spending money frivolously on clothes and fashion and that sort of thing. But Donna pretty much wears leggings and t-shirts all the time. That's pretty much her standard uniform. You don't really see her in sort of, you know, these um, high-end labels. So I don't think the money is going on clothing either. So we see Donna and the roommate having this uh, back and forth. And she leaves and she's staying with her boyfriend. And then we wind up toward the end of the episode. We see Donna and the rest of the Black Ink crew and everyone's sort of sitting around in the lobby and they're having the exchanges that they, as they typically do. And then they're in the 113 store, by the way. And the door opens and we hear that famous chime that you hear when the door opens there. And in walks the roommate along with the roommate's daughter. So without saying a word, <laughs> not a hello, hi, what are you doing here? What's your problem? Donna just takes off. Donna goes right, her wig goes left. The two of them, or the three of them, because the daughter's involved, um, they just sort of get, they tie up. And ultimately, I, I think I saw a couple of the girls from the Black Ink Crew, Bay in particular, I think I saw her do a couple kicks herself, sort of helping to defend Donna, which I thought was actually really sweet to give Donna some support, even though Donna is clearly in the wrong. Well, not necessarily because this woman showed up at her job. So when you show up at my job, all bets are off. So I think that in that particular respect, Donna had every right to take off. But pay your rent and you won't have these problems. So anyhow, let's move on from Donna. So last episode, we saw that Melody was accused of taking $10,000. Now in this episode, we find out that the $10,000 was actually an accounting error on the part of Kat. Um, it was basically the credit card uh sales hadn't reported yet and that's where the ten thousand dollars was that 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 is where the ten thousand dollars wasn't um accounted for so now that we know that the ten thousand dollars isn't missing caesar left uh, sky in charge of the new york store and sky is actually living in atlanta so she wanted to go back to atlanta with caesar but caesar said no you have to stay here and manage this store now when he was telling sky to manage the store I sat there and watched Sky just pick a cat. Like, I don't know. I just, there's something about Sky that I'm just not, I don't like her anymore. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. I used to be a huge Sky fan, but when I saw the way she was attempting to bully Cat in this episode, just picking on this girl for absolutely no reason, it's that, it's that type of girl that I just don't like. And so being a girl who came from nothing and is finally having a little piece of something, one would think that Sky would be a little bit more humble, a little bit more gracious, a little bit more kind, but it seems like the more she gets, she she just has this air of new money. You know how people come into a little money and their whole disposition, disposition shifts? And I don't even know if it's a shift of a disposition more so as it is someone pulling back the curtain and letting us get a peek into the, who the real person is. Because now that she has, like Sky is one of those people that <clears throat> she sort of kisses up to the people who have something to offer her. And if you don't have anything to offer her, then she doesn't feel compelled to be nice to you. So, you know, she'll, she'll step all over you unless you're a person who can help her get to the next level. Because all of this sort of inauthentic uh, bro, bro that she does to Caesar, it doesn't even, to, to me, it seems fake. It seems like she's forcing this sort of familiar relationship between she and Caesar. And I hear Caesar doing it too, but... Initially, it was something that I saw Sky sort of really propagating this sort of, you know, familiar, this is my brother, this is my brother. And, you know, even when you look back at the relationship that she had with Duchess, as soon as Duchess wasn't in a position of power to do anything for Sky anymore, Sky turned on her initially. So I just really didn't like the way that she treated Kat in this episode. And that was really sort of a final straw for me and sort of my affinity for Sky. I'm sorry, I just don't like her anymore. You know, I wish her the best with her sons, but... I just think that she's just not a good person, if I'm being completely and total, totally honest. I think she's only nice if you have something to offer her. And that, to me, is the worst kind of person. So anyhow, Skye is left in New York to manage the New York shop while Caesar goes back to Atlanta. And one more point about Skye. How, what, what qualifications does she have to be a manager? What person in their right mind sees Skye and her behavior, how loud and obnoxious and just downright ignorance she can be sees her and says i want you to manage anything for me i'm sorry sky couldn't she couldn't manage you know my 
my Facebook account, let alone my store. I just would not have her touching anything that represented my brand. Now, if Caesar thinks that she's qualified, that's fine, that's okay. But I'm sorry, to me, she just doesn't have the qualifications, nor the disposition, nor the professionalism to manage anything. You know, she can't even manage her temperament or her mouth. So why she's managing a store is beyond me. So Caesar leaves her there, and now that she has to stay in New York, and she wants to get back to Atlanta, and she keeps talking about how big her house is, how big her, you know, a person who... That, that's a person who you can tell who is not used to having anything because they have to let you know what they have at every opportunity. I know I'm going in on Sky a little bit. I don't care. I'm sorry. I just don't like her. So anyhow, she goes and appeals to Melody. And this is another thing about VH1. Okay, so if you look at Donna, Donna can't pay her rent. <laughs> Melody is living in a, uh, a trailer, an RV at this point. VH1, they definitely need to do something in terms of salary increases because it looks real bad for them to be on a television show and not be able to pay or to, to at the very least maintain shelter. So Sky reaches out to Melody and she's like, please come back. We need you. We want you back. You know, we'll double your salary. We'll do whatever. In essence, she doesn't really care about Melody. What she's more focused on is getting back to Atlanta. But Melody is not having any parts of it. She's like, nope, you guys didn't stand by me. No one took up for me. So I don't really care what happens at this point. All I know is I'm not coming back. And I definitely understood where Melody was coming from, even though I'm sure she'll be back on the show eventually. So with that being said, um, one of the last things I really want to touch on is Kevin Leroy. Kevin Leroy is the quote-unquote bisexual uh, tattoo artist who really is super, super cute guy. Um, in this episode, it was a really touching moment between Kevin and his father. Kevin's father was coming to New York, and Kevin had had some sort of, um, I guess, exchange with his father about his sexuality early on in life, where his father found, found a letter when he was around 18 from another guy who was interested in Kevin. And the dad essentially confronted Kevin and said, you know, we won't be doing any of that around here. And that, in turn, made Kevin sort of suppress his sexuality, or not necessarily suppress it, but compartmentalize it where he didn't talk about it with his father so when his father was coming to new york kevin felt like it was a time for him to finally step up and have that conversation with his dad and one thing that i really liked about this episode was you know kevin sits his dad down and he says dad look this is who i am you know i don't see that changing you know can you have a gay son and it was two things first of all he didn't qualify himself or quantify himself as bisexual anymore if you're going to be gay, you don't necessarily have to be gay in face. It's just be gay. You don't have to be, because I think sometimes guys will say that they're bisexual because they're trying to make it less of a shock to the system of the people around them. Oh, I'm bi. And then it's like, I only see you dealing with guys. So for someone who's bi, your, your bi tendencies aren't necessarily on, on, on a level playing field, so to speak. So... Kevin, you know, sits his dad down and he tells his dad that he's gay. And his dad is like, look, son, ultimately it's your life. You know, um, I don't necessarily agree with it, what you do um, or, or your lifestyle choice. I, I shouldn't call it a lifestyle choice, but I don't necessarily agree with, with homosexuality. But it's your life. You're my child and I love you. And I thought that that was great because <clears throat> here's what I think. At the end of the day, Whatever someone's sexual orientation, someone's sexual identity, gender identity, what have you, you don't have to agree with it. You don't have to agree with someone being gay, lesbian, bisexual, transsexual, asexual, pansexual, whatever moniker they subscribe or ascribe to themselves. You don't have to necessarily agree with that. But at the end of the day, every human being deserves respect. Unless a person has disrespected you, a good person is a good person. It shouldn't matter who they sleep with. That's really not my business. That's really not, um, has nothing to do with, with my own happiness. So I don't really care. And I don't understand why so many people are affected by the choices of other people in terms of their their uh, sexual proclivities or inclinations like let people be happy at the end of the day. So I thought it was really cool that his dad said, look, I don't agree with it. Not that I think it's cool that his dad doesn't agree with it. I thought it was cool that his dad found found commonality in saying that it's your life. I want you to be happy. And it's not my job to agree with it. So anyhow, you guys, that's it for this review. So please, please comment below. I want to hear what your take is on this episode on Donna and Kevin in particular. So make sure you comment below.
And that concludes this episode. So remember to like, comment, subscribe, and please share if you feel so inclined. Remember to follow me across all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. Also remember, it is better to be pissed off than it is to be pissed on. And as always in closing, people remember to live better, love harder, and think smarter. It is me, the Cerebral Diva. I will talk to you guys again soon. Have a great day. And as always, thank you for listening.